Hello, I'm Iona Bain. I'm BBC Morning Live's money expert, the founder of the Youngish Money blog, and a journalist and author. Now, I spend my life talking and writing about money, but you might not guess that I have always had an issue with numbers. At school, I was diagnosed with dyscalculia, which is sometimes referred to as dyslexia with numbers. My story of becoming more comfortable with numbers led to me becoming an ambassador for the charity National Numeracy. Now, I'm passionate about helping children and adults know that things can feel better if you have dyscalculia or you struggle with numbers. And for National Numeracy Day, I'd like to share some of my tips if you or the children you support have dyscalculia. I'm not a specialist, but as someone who has dyscalculia, these tips are based on what's really worked for me. So here's my first tip. Know what way of learning works for you. Take some time to think about how you learn. What helps you understand things? Once you have an idea of how you best learn things, you can apply that to numbers. For instance, I am a very visual learner. I find it much easier to grasp quantities, measurements or changes if I can see a picture, a chart, a graph, diagram or colours instead of just numbers. So a bank statement with columns of numbers can feel confusing to me, but if I see those same numbers in a pie chart, like slices of pizza, well I can get my head around that. So what way of learning works for you? Tip number two, take your time. Everyday life involves dealing with numbers, whether it's shopping, budgeting, reading a train timetable. These are all moments that can feel daunting if you have dyscalculia or struggle with numbers, but there are hardly any situations in everyday life that require you to do numbers under pressure. So when a numbers moment comes along in your day, make sure you feel focused and calm. Take as much time as you need. Remember, everyday maths is not a test. For instance, don't be pushed into deciding to buy something quickly if you're not sure it's a good deal. If something doesn't feel right or you don't understand how it works, walk away. Tip number three, let people know how you feel. Having dyscalculia can be confusing and frustrating, but one thing I've found that really helps is to let people know how you feel about numbers. Now, talking about this can take a lot of courage, especially if you think you're the only one in this situation. But around four million people in the UK have dyscalculia and millions more struggle with numbers, so you are not alone. I always make sure that prospective clients, employers, colleagues or friends know not to put me on the spot when it comes to arithmetic. It makes things more comfortable for me and it helps other people understand too. My fourth and final tip is help yourself to help your children. Whether you're a parent, carer, a teacher or anyone who supports children, being positive about numbers is one of the most important things you can do for them. But passing on some number positivity to your kids can feel tough if you've got dyscalculia and don't feel that comfortable with numbers yourself. But it can happen. I found a way to feel better about numbers and you can too. One thing you can do is try the National Numeracy Challenge. It's a free online tool that will help you to improve your math skills at your own pace, in your own time, and you can get started in just 10 minutes. Just search National Numeracy Challenge. So there you have it, some handy tips from my experiences and I hope they help you too. 